Hi, I'm Will Harris, and I'm the Flame Family Product Manager. I'm excited to be here to tell you about this Extension 1 release for Flame. So what this Extension 1 release is really about is speed and productivity for our users. We know how important that is to them. We also are addressing some key user feedback. The kind of technology that you're going to see from us is things like being able to work with multiple timelines in what we call the connected conform workflow. You're going to see GPU debayer for specific raw formats, really sort of multiplying the speed at which you can uh, work with raw formats. And then you're going to see a whole barrage of usability in enhancements, really, things that will just make it easier to operate the software. These are really the enhancements that I think characterize listening to our users and doing things that will just make their daily life using Flame much easier. Connected Conform is very much a response to the sort of dizzying complexity of projects. There is a level of connectivity that happens at the media level um, that really allows you to affect a clip in one place and then have that change propagate to all the other instances of your clip in different timelines or sequences. So let's say, for example, you have a raw format. You want to change the debayer settings or the color temperature. By changing that in one timeline, you'll automatically see that updated in the other timeline. As part of these connected timelines, you're able to then make an edit that will happen not just in that one timeline, but would propagate to all the other timelines too. In the case of timeline effects, uh, if you were to be working with a one long edit and you make lots of little tweaks where you grow the size of a, a scale reposition, you might want a way to propagate those tweaks that you're making in finishing across all those deliverable timelines. In a functionality we called Create Source Sequences, what the software does is it figures out what the longest span of each instance of different pieces of media is. So if you used you know, this section of one shot and then a slightly longer section in a different timeline, it would give you just one clip that spans the two. That's naturally where you might relink your media or look at your clips in a camera ascending timecode order or what we sometimes call C mode. But then building on that, we have what we call create shot sequences. And what this does is this builds what I like to call sort of the extended mix and gives you sort of a mega timeline that allows you to do the work in one place on this kind of mega timeline and then we'll automatically propagate those changes from that timeline to the other related connected sequences. There's one more functionality and that is the ability to uh, do renaming of shots as you're able to take your shot sequence and then do renaming based on things like the background index and then automatically build batch groups as we call them. So starting off by templating your shots from the elements that are stacked in your timeline. It's just a fast way of being productive. It's part of the theme of our release here, but when working in a multiple timeline environment, you know, we just think this is a, a kind of a, a brand new way of being really, really efficient. An interesting new performance feature is the GPU debayering of specific raw formats, both the ARRI and RED format, accelerated in some cases 15 or 20 or 25 times faster than accessing via CPU. So taking the GPU approach really gives us a big improvement even on existing platforms such as the Z820 with the K6000 and the Z840 from HP with the NVIDIA M6000. So we haven't forgotten creative features. The GMAS Tracer is really a cool new way of doing rotoscoping or isolation, really using a combination of our latest GMAS technology that you would find today in action, uh, broken out as its own batch node. And really it's the combination of the spline tool but also a keying algorithm that is really a new take on the tracer. The advantages of the GMAS tracer as a standalone node, as opposed to that functionality, which is also in action, is really that it can be used um, in a lighter way. It can be used anytime that you want to pull out a mask 
or you want to start pulling a key, you can go to the GMAS tracer as you know, yet another option for isolating. It's really a way to be able to do shape tracking, a way to be able to get fine edge detail. We've added some more enhancements to the edit box uh, nudging functionality, which are really gonna hopefully allow you to sort of supersede uh, existing G mask tools with this new take on uh, cutting masks. So in this extension, we've taken a close look at real usability questions in the software. We want to make people more productive, work faster, and we've done various things that relate to really the user interface experience. So you're gonna see things like 10 batch contexts instead of two. You'll also see the ability to go full screen on some of your favorite parts of the interface, whether it's the reels or the timeline or the actual conform window full screen, which is quite liberating. And then um, there's a bunch of little enhancements that relate to things like publishing to Shotgun or to the open clip architecture. And then we've got an on-demand proxy workflow, which really lets you take a look at proxies in a different way. Instead of having your entire project proxied, you could take individual clips, let's say at high resolution. When the things get too heavy, you can proxy just those clips and use that proxy on the fly. I hope you guys will really appreciate this focus on usability. It's one of the things we're working on and we're just getting started.